23, Mike Converse for Manhattan. For Dodge City, 66, Kyle Adams. And 26, Wayne Winkler. Indians brought a lot of fans down here. Dodge City seems quite fired up for this ball game. Manhattan's going to have to get off to an early start, keep Very things under control, and not let the big plays go the Demons' way early in the ball game. Larry Hatton set to kick off for the Indians. And this Dodge City crowd is fired up. They're ready. They want revenge on the Manhattan Indians. They got beat twice last year from the Indians, and they feel like they've got a good product out there. They're 10-0 so far this year, and they want to keep things rolling. Like a sign said, same story, verse 11, and that's exactly what Dodge City wants to happen tonight. Larry Hatton with the kick. It's being controlled by the wind. Yeah. It looks like it's going to be... Looks like a penalty flag before things even got going. It looks like uh, the gentleman number 88 for Dodge City, Tom Keeley, didn't have his mouthpiece in, so they blew the whistle, and already the Indians have a break. Penalty will go against Dodge City and a re-kick. So actually the ball game hadn't even started yet. No ticks off the clock. Uh, the ref blew the whistle before the kick, and uh, we're going to move the ball back five more yards. Larry Hatton will get the kick from the 45-yard line. Re-kick and start the ball game over with. Back deep for the blue de or for the red demons would be Mr. Winkler. He's a gentleman, Wayne Winkler. You're going to hear a lot about tonight. He's our leading rusher on the squad, and obviously he's got a lot of speed. He'll be returning the kicks tonight as well. So we're set to go again. Hatton approaches and the kick. Kick is in the same area. It's going to be taken at the 10-yard line by Van Lanningham. He cuts up the middle. He breaks one tackle. He's got some room on the right side. Up across the 50, down to the 45, the 40. And there's a big play for the Demons already. Taken all the way down to Manhattan's 40-yard line. Super run back by Van Lanningham. He cut, cut up the middle, got to the outside, and once again, the team speed the Red Demons have tonight is going to play an important factor, Matt. Well, we're going to have to see if the Indians' defense can rise to the occasion right now. You can see them out there in the huddle. They're all holding hands. They feel like they need a total team effort to win this ball game. and you just saw a little bit of the team speed that the Red Demons have. Van Lanningham taking it at the 10, running all the way back to the 40, and Manhattan defense has to rise to the occasion already. I formation in the backfield. And off off the right side and running over the Manhattan Indian defense is Mike Hessman, number 27. Tackle line number 98, Mike Helton. Mike Helton in on the tackle for the Indians. You're going to hear a lot from him tonight. Wichita Southeast succumbed to this Red Demon team last week, 35 to 13, and Manhattan beat, uh, of course, Wichita North on that pass. Garball took in the end zone in the last few seconds of the ball game, and that's how each of these teams got here. The winner will face the winner of the Lawrence Shawnee Mission West game next Saturday. Pass beat. Back to pass is Hahn. He's got his man, and it's going to be looks like into the end zone. Nope, not quite. Down at the one-yard line. Got past the secondary coverage. Super play, Matt. They faked a Expect to dive play and rolled out to the, opposite, to the strong side of the field and hit their wing back. John Brown, number 25 for the Blue Demons, takes that pass from Hahn and the Blue Demon or the Red Demons right on the goal line. 28-yard pass reception. First down and goal from the one-yard line. Hahn hands it off to Winkler. He's trying to fight his way over, and he gets in. So Dodge City, quickly, a minute and 10 seconds into the ball game, and the Red Demons are up 7-0. On the carry. We'll call it 6 nothing. Let him try the extra point, but what did uh, Rob, I, I mentioned it right when the game started. Manhattan's going to prevent, have to prevent the big play, and the big play happened on the kick, opening kickoff. Very explosive, this Dodge City team is, Matt. They're going to have to hold down the big plays. I think if they hold them down from making the big plays, they got a good chance still. 
Jesse Mendoza set to kick the extra, the extra point for Dodge City. Snaps down, and kick looks like it's going to be off to the right side, and that could be a big, big factor in this ball game, those extra points, because uh, it's cold out there, and you're going to have to get a grip on things. So as I said, they were. I thought they were going up seven nothing. It's six nothing, and we'll be back with more football right after this. So Manhattan will get his first chance on the offensive side of things. John Brown, the middle, the gentleman that caught the pass that got him down to the goal line, kicks off, and back deep, it's going to be taken by Dylan at the 10 yard line, up past the 15 through the 20, and he's looking for some room. Slip, tries to slip outside, and he's going to go nowhere. He's going to be knocked down by Mike Heffman. Number 27. So Mike Hessman, you see him on the running side of the offense, and you see him on special teams. It looks like a few of these gentlemen on this team are going to carry this ball club all night long. Matt Veach set in at the quarterback position for the Indians. Hand off his first man through Milliken. He runs off the right side and gets a nice little gain for the Indians. Call it second down and five. five. Nice run by Milliken off tackle for a gain of five. Manhattan's going to have to play some ball control offense here. They don't want to get the ball back to the Red Demons because they're fired up right now. They've got the momentum. Manhattan needs to control the ball and make sure things stay close in this ball game. Milliken on the carry once again. Picks up a gain of three on the play. Bring up third down and one for Manhattan. Excuse me, Eric Strauss with the carry. Nine forty-five to go in the ball game. If you just joined us, the Indians are down quickly, six nothing. Manhattan's first offensive possession of the ball game. Damn. Handoff, first man through is Milliken, and it looks like there is going to be a penalty on the play. Yes, yeah, so we have a legal procedure. Manhattan didn't have enough people on line of scrimmage, Matt. Tackle line number 62, Angel Latano. It is the illegal procedure, and it looks like that will move the Indians back five yards. Bring up fourth down for the Indians. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to be the gentleman who has to stand out there in that nice cold wind out there. We were out there shooting a little pregame, and boy, mm -mm. as you can see, declining the penalty is Dodge City. So Manhattan will be forced to kick for the first time tonight. Larry Hatton is going to have to get some nice punts off. They've got a kind of a crosswind blowing right across from behind the Indians' bench towards the press box. So you're going to get a little side wind. Number 33, Larry Hatton, is a punt for Manhattan. Back deep is Edwards along with Winkler. And it looks like Hatton gets off a beautiful, beautiful punt, and it's going to roll all the way down to just shy of the 10-yard line. We'll call it the 11-yard line where Dodge City take over first down and 10. Larry Hatton did a good job last week of getting the ball, kicked off some nice punts and uh, pinned Wichita North a couple times inside the five-yard line, so they're going to have to do that quite a bit tonight as a slight mist begins to fall across the field. That's a 52-yard kick by Larry Hatton. So we'll have to see if the Red Demons are as explosive as they were the first time around. Didn't take him any time to move the ball down the field. Get out there, Jerry. Van Linningham all the way to the far side. Handoff up the middle. 26, Wayne Winkler, the ball Mr. Carrier. Winkler, their leading carrier. Winkler has 906 yards on the season on 160 carries. So anytime you see a high school runner get up near the 1,000-yard mark, you know he's a heck of a runner, have a heck of a season. Gain of three on the play will bring up second down and seven. See Dodge City running out of a wing T formation quite a bit tonight, similar to you saw Junction City. 
Hessman coming off the right side. He's got some room. Crawford in on the tackle, as is a host of Indians. 84, Ken Benson was in there, and Jared Rand was also in on the play. So the Indian defense trying to get things stopped on the side of the, <coughs> on the Red Demon side. Brings up third down and four. See what the Indians can do here. Handoff off the left side to Hessman. He's trying to get outside, and the Indians contain him, but it looks like he's going to be a little bit short of the first down. It's going to be awfully close as we look through the fog and the mist and the dirty windows. <laughs> yeah, it's a cold night out there, Matt, as we saw down there at pregame. They really they need to keep Dodge City inside and make them run off tackle where Manhattan's defensive power is, Matt. They need to not let them get outside. So the Red Demons are going to be forced to punt for the first time tonight. Back deep is going to be Garball and Lindsey Sandahl, two guys with excellent hands, and that's exactly what you need on a night like tonight. John Brown sent to punt. He gets off a nice punt right down the middle. It's going to be taken by Sandahl, and he makes the tackle past the 50, over the 40, and it looks like... Okay, Lindsey Sandahl. It looked like I saw a flag on the play, but there wasn't. But Lindsey Sandahl did a super job of getting that ball and getting out of the way of the tackler, so Manhattan will have good field position. It'll be first down and 10. Ball will be on the 38-yard line of the Red Demons. Super run by Lindsey Sandahl. He concentrated really well on that ball and had a 20-yard return, Matt. Super concentration, as you mentioned. Slot back for the Indians is Eric Strauss. The handoff goes to Milliken. He pounds his way down just shy of the 35-yard line. We'll call it the 36. Bring up second down and seven. Six twenty-four to go in the first quarter. The Indians down six nothing. Good field position for the Manhattan Indians. See if they can get in and get some field go position. Matt Veach pass over the middle and he's under a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure in on him. He wasn't able to get it out there to guard ball with the intended receiver. He had all the time in the world. Good defensive series for Manhattan High on that last defense. So brings up third down and eight for Manhattan. Pro set formation, Garbald left side, Mike Martin far right. Matt Veach back to pass. He's got three receivers out there. He passes over the middle to McIlvain. And boy, McIlvain has popped and is not able to hold on to the ball. Looks like uh, there was a little, a little bit of an elbow up on the chin type deal there. Fourth down, fourth down. Bring up fourth down. It looks like Manhattan's going to be forced to punt once again. Ball is spotted at 35 yard line. Andy McElvain was just hammered as he got that ball and was forced out of his hands on the hard hit. It'll be Larry Hatton set to kick again for the Indians. Hatton goes for the corner, and it is, oh, it's going to be a nice play by Dillon. It's going to be on the one yard. Oh, it looks like they call it a touchback, as you can hear the Indian coaches, but it looked like it was going to be out on the one yard line. Dodge City will take over first and 10. We'll be back right after this. I don't know. We're running around battery power. The battery's going dead. Hold on to a child in an accident. In Burns two guys. It's going to be taken all the way over to the 40. Jared Rand, the man to stop him if he can. And Jared Rand makes a touchdown saving tackle. A big, big play completed to number 88, Tom Keeley. 47-yard pass play from Rob Rego Hahn to Tom Keeley. Super play. Got behind the... Got behind Lindsey Sandal and made a nice cut across the field and pick up a 47 yards, Matt. 
That's the second big play the Red Demons have pulled off so far tonight, and the Indian secondary cannot let that happen. It looked like Lindsey Sandahl was trying to get up there and get the interception, but it didn't happen that way, and if you can't do that, if you can't get the ball knocked down or intercept it, get the guys behind you, that's exactly what it's going to happen. Just did, 47 yards. First down and 10, ball spotted on the Manhattan 40-yard line. Wing T formation. Hahn keeps the ball off the left side. And he's going to be stacked up by Paul Bridwell and a host of other Indians in there. Fights, it, fights his way up to the 30-yard line, bring up second down and five. Hans pilot at 440 relay team, Matt, and he showed his speed there, getting the out, trying to get to the outside. They need to contain Hahn, keep him in the pocket. He, they rolled him out twice on two pass plays now. So the Indian defense being tested strong for the second time tonight. Second down and five, 3.52 to go in the first quarter. Hahn with the handoff to the second man through, Hessman, and he falls down, bring up third down and five. Indian defense needs to really plug these holes. These guys are very explosive, and you're not going to see eight turnovers from these guys as you, as, as, uh, you saw against Junction City. Hessman coming into the ball game had 783 total yards on the season and off 125 carries they've got three running backs with over 700 yards and that's uh, that's good for any team Van Lanningham all the way to the near side he's going to be <coughs> contested it looks like Lee Brooks or Ken Benson Hahn looking to pass. He's got man wide open over the middle. It's Winkler, and Winkler's going to fight his way down to the three-yard line. Excuse me, not Winkler, John Brown. And John Brown has hurt the Indians all night tonight. It looks like they had the quarterback contained. He got loose and pegged it to Brown. First down and 10, Blue de Red Demons. 29-yard gain on that pass play. Again, Hahn dropped back that time and stepped up in the pocket nicely and delivered the ball real well. I'm so used to saying Wichita East Blue Aces because that's always who Manhattan has to play in the in the playoffs in football. But uh, Red Demons, we got to get used to that, and that's exactly what they're doing tonight. They're red hot. 2:44 to go in the first quarter, and they're knocking on Manhattan's door once again. The handoff is to Winkler. He fights his way into the end zone. Six points for Dodge City, and they're up 12 to nothing. They have so many offensive weapons, it's unbelievable. They can go to Van Lanningham, they can go to Hessman, Mendoza, the fullback, John Brown. There's just a number of people who they're hitting, and their uh, offense looks like everything it's meant to be tonight. Yes, Matt, they're very versatile. You can't really get a key on one man in their backfield. Jesse Mendoza is sent to kick the extra point, and this time it's up and good. So, with 2.36 to go in the first quarter, it's Dodge City 13, Manhattan 0. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Kickoff is going to be taken by Garball at the 8-yard line. And boy, the Red Demon's got a lot of red down there. Ball's fighting for his life, and he's going to be knocked down on the 7-yard line. The Red Demons are fired up. I don't know. Uh, I just had somebody whisper in my ear that it's all over with, but I don't know about that, uh, that yet. The Indians are need some definite breaks, need to get some offense going. Outstanding kick coverage by Dodge City that time. Ball was kicked deep, and they covered the, ball, covered the field nicely. So Matt Veach will get his second chance to run the Indian offense and get things going here. The offense of the Blue Red Demons is really doing a good job, and their defense uh, obviously has done a good job so far as well. Handoff is to Bridwell, or excuse me, Milliken, and Milliken runs right into a host of Red Demons. There's nowhere to go. Loss of one on the play will bring up second down and 11. I guess I'd have to say that the Red Demons have come to play tonight. <laughs> Mike Martin is going to have a little bit of one-on-one -on -one coverage on the left side. The handoff goes up the middle to Strauss, and he's going nowhere. Maybe a gain of one on the play. It's going to bring up third down and ten. They play for the Indians, deep in their own territory, third and about ten. 
Need to get a good play or at least not turn it over down here, Matt. I'm sure Coach Lane would rather see a punt than he would a turnover down here. And the hand's got to be a little numb down there. It was 22 degrees when the game kicked off, and since a light drizzle has started to fall, Manhattan did bring quite a contingent of fans down, as did, of course, Dodge City, of course, them being at home. Matt Veach over the middle to Garball, and he's got him. It looks like it's going to be a first down, and that's exactly what Manhattan needed. 21-yard line will be first down and 10 for the Indians. A scary throw by Matt Veach. Garball ran about 10 yard down and in, and hit him right across the middle for 12-yard gain, Matt. Garball, of course, has really come, over, come of his own these last four or five games. The Indians have won four out of their last five, and uh, Garball has been very instrumental, including the one last week where he caught the touchdown, game-winning touchdown against Wichita North. Handoff up the middle is to Milliken. Milliken fights for two, three yards on the play, bringing down second down and seven for the Indians. Here's some of the comments in the background, and it's going to be a lot of comments coming from the Indian coaches, so you'll be able to hear, hear the experts right next to us give their opinions, and you'll uh, be able to pick up some of that. When it goes good, you'll be able to hear that. When it goes bad, you'll probably be able to pick that out, too, as the Indians wait till the end of the first quarter, and they'll change sides of the field. So the Red Demons the definitely quarter, control the first the quarter. Game. They go up 13 to nothing, and we'll be back with second quarter action right after this. A little bit of first quarter stats show that Dodge City is right around 135 yards on total offense. Manhattan is less than 50, so there's the difference in the ball game. The pass is to Andy McElvain. He slides out to the right side, and the Dodge City defense immediately contains him. Andy McElvain did a good job of holding on to that ball as a host of Red Demons attacked him. Brings up third down and a long two for the Indians. Look for Strauss or possibly a uh, swing pass out to Mr. Garball. Both, both wide receivers are going to be to the left side with Mike Martin and Garball. Beach hands it off up the middle, and there, boy, he's going to be tossed down right away. There was a hole there. It looked like if he could have done a step to his left just a tad, he would have had some room, but wasn't able to do it, and it's going to bring up fourth down, so the Indians will be forced to hand the ball back to the Red Demons, who have scored on two of their first three possessions here in the first half. Yes, Manhattan High split two wide receivers out to the wide side of the field and try to run a fullback trap, it looked like, man, up the middle. Now, one more man, they would have they would have been gone up the middle, it looked like. Larry Hatton set to punt once again for the Indians. He got a 52-yarder off his last time. And this time he gets a nice one, and it's going to be going out of bounds right at the 25-yard line. So... He doesn't let the uh, Red Demon receivers get the ball and run it back, and that's, that's probably all for the better for Manhattan, the way things have gone tonight. It'll be first down and 10 on their own 25-yard line for the Red Demons. 40-yard punt for Larry Hatton that time. Mm -hmm. 10.34 to go in the second quarter. The Indians are down 13 to nothing. They've been totally dominated by this offensive machine they call the Red Demons. Hahn hands it off to the first man through, breaks the tackle, it's Winkler. And Winkler piles his way up to the 40-yard line, a gain of 15 on the play, and that's why you can tell he's, he's rushed for 906 yards on the year, and you can see exactly why right there. We'll be back right after this. You see Mike Robinson right there, right in front of your screen, bending over, and it looks like he's uh, got something wrong with his knee, maybe a Charlie horse. So uh, you have to wait and see if this <coughs> Red Demon offense goes after Robinson. Handoff is up the middle. It's going to be Winkler. And Winkler's going to get all the way up to the just shy of the 50-yard line. Looks like it's going to be uh, first down and 10 for the Red Demons. Manhattan's defensive line really needs to get in there and dig at some trenches. They're just getting mowed away like you haven't seen all year. 
Right now they're getting beat on the line of scrimmage in both both facets of the game, Matt. Well, the Indians look like they always get the uh, <coughs> Red Demons control on, but third down, and uh, they just kind of beef it up there, and Manhattan will have to uh, dig in more than ever right now. Handoff is to Winkler, and it looks like he uh, is going to be tackled after two yards, but once again, second effort. Piles three more on top of that. It'll bring up second down and five. Super run by that time by Winkler. Just kept his feet. Looks like Dodge City's backs keep their feet real well. Looks like Mike Robinson's leg is feeling better now as he's got rid of his limp. See if he can get in there and do a little duking around as, as Dodge City's doing right now. Dodge City is totally dominating this ball game right now. They're controlling everything on the offensive side of the ball at least. Hahn with the handoff, fake handoff, and it looks like a penalty flag on the field. It's going to be... Offsides against Manhattan. So that will give Dodge City close to a first down. I'm not sure if it will quite get him a first down. It'll be five yards. We'll have to see. But either way, Dodge City is continuing to move this ball on the Indians. First and ten at Dodge City. It is a first down. Mark the ball at the 40-yard line of the Indians. Haven't seen the big play this series. Let's knock on wood. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> how they did it the first two times. Big pass play. Hand off up the middle to Winkler. 26, Wayne Winkler. Looks like he'll get a gain of one on the play. He'll bring up second down and nine. Looks to me like the, the Red Demons are kind of lulling the Indians to sleep right now, and pretty soon you're going to see them bust something real big. Looks to me like they try to set them up each play for for their next play that they're going to try to run. They, wide variety of plays you're seeing. One play they'll run the wide side of the field, next time they'll come back to the short side. Tom Keeley, the gentleman that you've seen uh, catch the number of passes already tonight, is in front of your screen there. Hahn rolls out the right side. He's got a lot of room, and he's going to be uh, fighting for second effort, third effort finally, and he's going to pick up close to a first down. The Indians are kind of sort of like playing they were last week against North. Um, they're really not hitting these guys and getting them down on the first try and second effort. That's what it's all about in the playoffs. Second effort is really getting them some more yards, and in that time, a new first down. Dodge City really looks like they want this game bad tonight, Matt. That was a nice nice run by Rego Hahn. Outstanding play calling on throughout the whole game so far for Dodge City. Ball spotted at Manhattan's 27-yard line. See John Brown out to the far side. He's the gentleman that uh, has been hurting the, the Indians quite a bit tonight, too. Hand off to the left side. Looks like it's going to be Winkler, and they were using Winkler quite a bit tonight. He didn't play any against Wichita Southeast last week, and, and uh, Dodge City won that game 35-13. to 13, So Dodge City is loaded tonight and going up against a Manhattan team who uh, mediocre this year, and um, they're showing exactly what it's all about. Yeah, he looks like he's got a broken hand or a broken, broken thumb on his right hand there. Looks like he might have trouble carrying the ball, but so far he's done a good job, Matt. Well, he's in there tonight as the Red Demons want to gain revenge after those two losses last year to Manhattan. The handoff is up the middle to number 25, who is uh, John Brown. Excuse me, Winkler, 26. And Dodge City really hasn't let that impress them on offense this time down the field. They're just running right at Manhattan and just kind of moving them back yard by yard. Looks to me like they try to pull their guard, and then they try to cut back, give the ball their full back and cut back against the against the blocks to the other side of the line of scrimmage, Matt. If I were down there right now, I'd warn the secondary to beware of the pass going into the end zone because right now Manhattan is expecting runs right up the middle. Bootleg, Bootleg is by Hahn, and he keeps it off the left side. There's a flag on the play. It looks like it's going to be a clip on the Dodge City Red Demons. We'll have to see as the officials discuss it. And there you can see John Brown saying an aw shucks out there. I'm sure that's not exactly what he said, but uh, it is going to be against the Red Demons holding. So that's a break Manhattan has needed. <coughs> Standing fake that time by Reggie Hahn to the wing back David Lanahan, and keeping it on the bootlegger on the left side. We'll bring up a third down once again for the Red Demons, but this time we'll tack 10 more yards onto it. 
So it'll bring up third down and 16. It was a golden opportunity for the Indian defense to rise up and stop the Red Demons from scoring on this possession. Van Lanningham to the far side. Keeley to the near side. Back to pass is Hahn. He's going after Keeley. Oh, it's taken by number 84, who is Brad Carroll. But he's going to be short. Brad Carroll was slanting across the middle. Almost dropped the ball, but he's going to be far short of a first down. Funny looking pass that time by Rego Hahn. He kind of kind of flipped it straight down and really got there in a hurry to the tight end. Looks like we have about fourth and 11, Matt. A lot of people around here, including myself, thought he was going to throw it down the sideline to Tom Keeley, a la Garball and Matt Veach hooking up last week. But that's not what happened. It brings up fourth down and nine, and the Red Demons are going to go for it. They have nothing to lose right now. They're up 13 to nothing. Hahn is back to pass. He's going after Brown, throws it in the end zone, and it's going to be incomplete. So Manhattan will take over first and ten and have decent field position, the ball will be spotted right at the 30-25 yard line. Manhattan sets to take over, first and 10. Veach is back to pass. He's looking for Mike Martin, and he's got him right at the 35-yard line. Martin squirms ahead for another yard to the 36. Got to like that. First down play. The Indians wasting no time getting the ball up in the air. First down and 10 for Manhattan. Nice pattern ran that time by Mike Martin. Ran about a 10-yard button hook, and Veach is really throwing the ball well tonight. He's been on target with everyone who's passed so far, Matt. Well, they're going to need to throw some more passes tonight. I thought... Uh, that you would have seen more passing already tonight for the Indians, but they really haven't got their offense untracked yet. Pro set formation, two runners in the backfield and two wide receivers, as you can see it out there. Matt Veach back to pass once again. He's going to air it out. This time it's to Jeff Bissey, just off the tip of his fingertips. Jeff Bissey, number two, the new man in the ballgame. He's going to bring up second down and ten. Thirteen to nothing. The Indians behind. Matt Veach trying to get him back in it. He throws it long. He's got Mike Martin along the sideline. And uh, Martin goes up, tries to bring it down. A little too far over his head. It's going to bring up third down and ten for the Indians. I like what I see from Matt Veach. He's not wasting any time trying to get the ball out there. And Mike Martin was almost able to come down with that ball. Good effort by Mike Martin on that play. Veach looks like he's throwing the ball real nice tonight, Matt. Well, Veach is throwing it real nice, but he's not connecting with anybody, so uh, that's what you need to do in this ballgame. Once again, the winner of this contest will go to Manhattan next week and take on the winner of the Lawrence Shawnee Mission West game. For the loser, the season's over. Strauss and Milliken in the backfield. Martin and Ball, the receivers. Veach back to pass. He throws it over the middle. It's going to be intercepted. Tom Keeley. That's the second pass he's got tonight. One on the offense and one on the defense. So Tom Keeley's doing a super job for the Red Demons. And they're going to take over the ball. Manhattan's 45-yard line, first down and 10. That time, not, not a real good read by Matt Veach. Threw in a double coverage. It looked like his main receiver was Garball, and he didn't look off very well on that play. I was going to say, he looked the ball right into Keeley's hand because uh, it was pretty obvious where he was going to throw it. So the Indian defense out on the field once again. They're going to have to stop the Red Demons. Hahn, hand off to the first man through. The Winkler, he's got some room. Cuts outside to the 30. He's going to be popped out of bounds by Lindsey Sandahl. In the last two games, Lindsey Sandahl has done a good job of saving those big, big runs. He's made some big tackles the last two games. Last week against Barry Sanders and this week against Winkler from Dodge City. Manhattan's faced two good backs two weeks in a row, so they need to start containing him a little bit more to stay in this ballgame, Matt. Winkler, very explosive, breaking right off the line before the Indians knew it. He was in the secondary. Ball on the 22 yard yard line first down and 10 the red demons threatening once again they're up 13 nothing 
Four minutes to go in the first half. Hahn is back to pass. He's looking for Brown. Throws it over the middle this time, and it's going to be incomplete. Brad Carroll was the intended receiver, uh, intended receiver across the middle. Manhattan Indians are 6-4 and four on the air, and uh, a lot of people are amazed to see the Indians here right now tonight in the playoffs. Semifinals, one, way away, one game away from the championship. As you'll remember, the Indians opened the year, their first win against Shawnee Heights, and then they dropped three in a row, and uh, people in Manhattan were wondering what was going on, but Coach Lane got them back, and they're in the playoffs at 6-4 and four right now. And uh, Coach Lane is one of those never-say-die coaches, and don't count them out yet. You saw what happened last week. Winkler! going to bust it into the end zone. Boy, it looks like, once again, it looks like they had him at the line of scrimmage, and he just takes it in the end zone. No problem. Second effort, the Indians are not tackling hard like they need to be. This tackle at line of scrimmage, again, can't arm tackle. Good back like Winkler. A lot of arm tackling out there tonight for Manhattan High. They're going to have to put put on the shoulder, shoulder pads and strap them on and go out and play some tough football from here on out, Matt, to get back in this game. That's right. There's not another game you can make up for this. 22-yard touchdown run. And once again, Jesse Mendoza will be in to attempt the extra point. He's one for two tonight. Missed his first one, made his second one. And he's going to miss his third one. It's going to be shoot off to the right side. So the Indians down 19 to nothing. 3.50 to go in the first half. We'll be back right after this. Things aren't looking too bright right now for the Manhattan Indians. You can see them getting set to receive the kickoff, and it'll be the third chance they've had this tonight. 19 to nothing. The Indians are down, and uh, unless they get some breaks, it's going to look awfully grim for the Manhattan High Indians. Looks like Air Lane's going to go to the airways now, Matt. And it's, everybody jokes we went Coach Lou Lane about that, but it looks like he's going to have to go do it to get back in this ballgame. John Brown set to kickoff. He gets a nice kickoff. It's going to be taken down at the five-yard line by Dillon, up to the 10, the 15. He crosses across the 25, and there's a host of in, uh, red... Oh, excuse me as the cold gets in the way there, but a host of red demons there to greet him right at the 23-yard line. And number 21, Bob Smith. You can see Scott Milliken down there. He's not injured. It just looks like he's got an equipment repair on his on his uniform helmet. Hey, he's so. got a helmet. And the ref finally realizes that, and uh, Matt Veach tries to help him out. Analyze this ball game so far a little bit, Rob. <laughs> the Indians are just getting moved all over the field, both on offense and defense. They're getting beat as line of scrimmage. They haven't controlled line of scrimmage yet this game. Looks like in the the first half scoring for Dodge City, they had, third, had a two-yard run for a touchdown, the first touchdown, and they had a 22-yard run from Winkler, another five-yard run. Well, as you can see, the Indian Scott Milliken is fighting his way up for a few yards, and he looks like he picks up a first down. Excuse me, that was Eric Strauss, picks up the just shy of the first down for the Indians. It looked like he had fumbled on the play, but no, a, the ground cannot cause a fumble. And that's exactly what happened there. Second down and one, Manhattan High. 2.59 to go in the first half. Pro set formation. Ball and Martin, the receivers. Veach is back to pass. Throws it over the middle to Andy McElvain. He's got some room. Fights his way all the way up to the 49-yard line. That was a nice little quick screen there to, for the Indians. Good, good, good throw to the tight end there. Tight end release and hit him about four yards straight down the field. And he would have broke one more tackle. He would have been gone, Matt. So the Indians starting to move the ball a little bit, see if they can get down there and get some points on the board. It'd be much easier for Manhattan High going into the locker room with at least three points on the board. It'd be much nicer if they had seven on the board, but uh, if they need to get some points on the bar board, Garball and, and uh, Jeff Bissey, the two receivers in there now for the Indians. Strauss and Milliken, of course, in the backfield as usual. It is a little moist out here tonight with the drizzle falling. That's why you see the referees exchanging balls. They don't want them too slippery. First down and 10 for Manhattan High. Beach back to pass. 
He's got Andy McElvain once again at the 40-yard line. He's going to be popped back. They're going to mark it at the 39, so Andy McElvain holds on to the ball, and uh, he's going to pick up another first down for the Indians just inside the Red Demon 40-yard line. Can't say enough, Matt, about the way Matt Beach is throwing the ball tonight. That time, McElvain ran a 12-yard down and out, and Matt Beach threw the ball before he even, before he was even looking. His hands have to be solid red out there, as cold as it is. The Indians running out of the pro set once again. This time the handoff is to the left side to Eric Strauss. He's got a lot of room. Breaks one tackle, breaks another, and gets all the way down to the 23-yard line. Nice bit of running by Eric Strauss. I don't think he realized he had so much room out there. He's not used to it. I think he was a little bit surprised when he got outside and saw no red demon defenders. Blue Lane's team's got three timeouts left and they got enough time to score a touchdown here, Matt. Ball spotted on the 23-yard line. So look for the Indians to try and force that ball into the force the ball into the end zone. Matt Veach has got 62 yards of passing tonight, so he's uh, he's doing quite a good job. The pitch is out to Milliken, and oh, Milliken barely gets tripped up by Winkler, and uh, Winkler just barely gets his shoelaces, and we'll spot it at the 14-yard line. Milliken was in the end zone. Super option play by the quarterback, Matt Veach, there. Waited until the last second, made a pitch to Milliken. One more tackler again. It's like three or four plays tonight, Matt. One more tackler, and Manhattan High would have been gone for a long, long game. Dodge City calls a timeout, and they don't want to see the Indians get some points on the board. Veach on the year so far has gained 398 yards. Right now he's over 400, and we'll, we'll try to update that for you. But Veach leading the Indians with 398 yards rushing. Strauss is up next with 308. And then Bridwell, who hasn't uh, had much lately because he's been moved to the Indians' secondary. So uh, Manhattan High Indians looking the best they have all night, moving the ball down the field. Matt, looks like uh, if they could get a score touchdown here, it'd be a big emotional factor going into halftime. So far in the game, Scott Milliken has 19 yards rushing, and Strauss has 8 yards. So right there, Red Demon defense has done an outstanding job on the line of scrimmage, Matt. Matt Veach bringing in the play from Coach Lane. Second down and one, so the Indians uh, have a have a down or two they can use here. The Red Demon players trying to find a fire up this defense. 19, actually the 14 yard line the Indians take over. Beach is back to pass, he's looking for a ball. And he throws it right over the middle to Andy McIlvain. And McIlvain's got four in a row, four receptions in the row, all the way down to the five yard line. And Andy McIlvain has really come back after he really got popped in the first quarter and dropped that ball. McIlvain's caught three or four passes since then, Matt. Big key tonight for Manhattan High, as well as his throwing offensive line. has done a super job pass protecting for Matt Beach. Has not really been pressured yet tonight. And if this continues, look out for the Indians in the second half, Matt. Matt Veach once again gets the call from Coach Lane. See if they can stick it in the end zone. First down and five. They've got four attempts to get it in there. 124 left to go in the ball in the first half. Veach is going to hand it off, it looks like, and it's going to be to Bridwell at the five-yard line. We'll be back right after this. Stick the ball in the end zone. Look for a screen pass or look for Strauss up the middle. Veach rolling out. He pitches it back to Milliken. He's got a lot of room. Fights his way into the end zone. And Scott Milliken gets the first points on the board for the Indians. Nice, nice way of stringing out the Red Demon defense. Uh, number 69 made a beautiful block on that play. Just drove his man all the way back in the end zone. Blue Lane came back with the option play, and Milliken scored from five yards out, Matt. So the Indians get first points on the board tonight six of them they're down 19 to six just under a minute to go in the first half larry hatton will attempt the field or the extra point for the indians jeff grantham sent to hold the ball snap is a little high and uh, grantham is not going to be able to go anywhere snap was too high and grantham didn't have time to get it down before the coverage got there so just as the red demons did manhattan doesn't get their first extra point attempt the indians are down 19 to six a little analysis on that first that first uh, touchdown scoring drive for the Indians. They didn't give up the big play. They didn't let turn turn over the ball, and they moved the ball consistently. Didn't have to wait the third down every time to pick up the first down. Big series that time for Manhattan. Needed to score, and they did. Mixed up their running and passing nicely on that drive, and good, good sign for the second half. Let's hope, Matt. 
And what the Indians are going to have to do right now is not give up that big, big play that's going to get Dodge City some more points before halftime. They're already down 13 points. That's just two touchdowns, and that's easier to make up than it would be three touchdowns. Larry Hatton set to kick off. Ball is spotted at the 40-yard line. He kicks it straight down the middle. That means it's going to be taken by Winkler, who misjudges it, and it goes into the end zone, and it's going to be a touchback. So a uh, big break for the Indians. Winkler's not able to hold on to it. So Dodge City will take over the ball first down and 10 on the, or their own 20-yard line. Need to prevent the big play right here before halftime, Matt. Keep the momentum going in the second half. Gives us a chance to remind you that the Indians basketball squad opens up play on December 6th, and you'll be able to hear it see, see and hear all their Friday night games right here on Ch Cable Channel 6 on Saturday morning. So you want to keep tuned to that Indian basketball on TV 6 this coming up winter. Hahn with the handoff up the middle. There's a trap play, and Winkler's got a lot of room off the left side. He's going to be grabbed down by Paul Bridwell, however, at the 43-yard line, and that's twice they've run, twice or two or three times they've run that trap play tonight, and Wayne Winkler, just a lot of speed, breaking it wide open. Outstanding run that time by Winkler. And skin, you got you got to hit him solid. He's not going to go down with arm tackles tonight, Matt. That time, pulled the guards, trap play, and there he goes once again. You hit the nail on the head there, Rob. They've got to get them down the first time they get into the line. Once they break out, they've got all the running room and they get the momentum going. It just doesn't work that way. 35 seconds. The Indians need to hold the Red Demons. Brown split, split to the near side. Hahn is back to pass. He's looking for Brown, and that's exactly who he's throwing to. Paul Bridwell with the defense for the Indians, and the ball didn't even get a chance to get there as Hahn was being hounded in the backfield. Good Indian defense. Nice rush that time from the end from Ken Benson on the strong side of the field came in. Put a little pressure on Rego Hahn. Ken Benson has had a super year so far for the Indians. You didn't hear a lot about him before the season began, but he showed his worth no numerous times for the Indians' defense, especially the specialty teams. He's done a super job this year. Tom Keeley right in front of your screen right there. Watch out for him. He's got a lot of speed. Hahn hands it off to Van Lanningham, and he goes outside. He's got some room. He breaks Jared Rand, and boy, he's going to be tripped up. I'm not sure exactly where he goes out of bounds. Have to see where the referee marks it. It's going to be at the 20. It looks like the 22-yard line, but Van Lanningham just busted outside on the Indians, and he should have really been contained there by Jared Rand, I believe. He's been waiting for that play all night, Matt. Inside wing back reverse, just like Nebraska runs it. Guy got outside in Manhattan. Down there in the scoring position once again with 13 seconds left in the half. 22-yard line, first down and 10. 13 seconds to go in the first half. Hahn is back to pass. He's got a man right over the middle, and it looks like it's going to be Brad Carroll. And Brad Carroll's going to be popped down. It looks like a gain of maybe one on the play, maybe no yardage on the play. Good Indian defense. It's four seconds to go. Dodge City almost let the clock run out, so we're going to have to see if they're going to attempt an extra point or just go or attempt a field goal or just go for the touchdown. Looks like it'd be about 39-yard field goal into little, with a little bit of a tailwind, so it ought to be interesting. I don't know if he's got the legs for this or not, Matt. On a cold, damp, chilly night in Dodge City, we'll have to see. Not your perfect conditions for a football game, I'd, I'd say. Could be, could be a lot worse. <laughs> The reason you're seeing this ball game tonight on a Monday night is because uh, Kansas State High School Activity Association rules state that there has to be a 72-hour break between the time of the contest and the viewing of the, the broadcast. So uh, that is why we're not able to show it on 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings as we usually do. Four seconds to go. It looks like Dodge City will go for the touchdown. They're going to be able to get off one play. And Hahn is back to pass. He rifles it down the middle. He's got a man, and it's going to be knocked down. So the Indians get a big break. It was, a, it was attempted for Mike Hessman right over the middle. So we're at halftime. The Indians are down 19-6. to We'll be back right after this. Second half action. 
action. We've got some unofficial first half statistics, and they show the difference in the ball game. Glenn Vitt Zimmerman, our statistician, and uh, Dodge City. Their scoring summary: 35-yard kick return opened up the game. A 28-yard pass, and then a missed 28-yard pass for a, a touchdown, and then a missed field goal attempt. 6-0 Dodge City. Then a 29-yard pass and a two-yard run. 13-0 Dodge City. A 22-yard run and a missed extra point. 19-0 Dodge City. And just before the end of the first half, the Indians score on a five-yard run, 19 to six is the score right now. Manhattan Indians down. The rushing, look at Dodge City. Winkler has 11 carries for 114 yards. Van Landingham, two carries for 50 yards. Two carries for 50 yards, that's amazing. Hessman, two carries for six yards. And Hahn is seven, has seven complete, completed passes for 114 yards, 384 total yards, and 109 total yards for the Indians. So uh, that's a big difference in the ball game nearly 200 yards difference on the offensive side of the ball impressive offensive output by Dodge City what can you say That's difference in the game has been line of scrimmage Matt Manhattan's really lucky to be only down 13 points to half let's hope for a better second half well the Indians are gonna have to start right now they get first possession of the ball as they won the toss in the first half got the choice the second half so they're gonna take the ball and try to get some points on the board it's gonna be a short kick taken by Garball at the 18 yard line Garball's trying to find a hole up to 30, tries to break outside, crosses the 35 to the 36-yard line, and Manhattan, nope, will take over first down and 10. Good field position for Manhattan on their own 36. It's a win behind them. Talking to one of the uh, assistant coaches at halftime mentioned that uh, the players were more than a little upset with themselves and see if they get their attitude straightened out, see if things can get going once again, because I'm sure Coach Lane lit their fire in the locker room. Could be the last half of a ball game for one of these teams, and there's going to be a timeout. Manhattan. Looks like there was a little confusion on the signals, so the Indians, uh, boy, if things get close in the fourth quarter, that timeout could be very costly to Manhattan. Yeah, as coaches are here are saying that Matt Leach's mouthpiece wasn't, couldn't find it or something, so that's why I had to call timeout. Costly timeout, really. <laughs> start the second half. <laughs> Not a good way to start it, Matt. Well, the Indians get the first crack with the offensive side of things and uh, see if they can get things moving. They they showed good signs the last series of the first half, and uh, they got the ball in the end zone for the first time. They're down by only two touchdowns, so uh, they're not out of this ball game at all, as we found out last week against Wichita North. We were counting them out early in the fourth quarter, and uh, they came back and proved us wrong. Andy McElvain going out of the ball game right now. Mike Martin and Garball in there. Once again, Strauss and Milliken in the backfield. Veach with the handoff to Strauss. Off the left side, he cuts back in, gets a yard on the play. Tough, tough defense by the Dodge City Red Demons. Lance Denton in on the tackle. Also in on the tackle was Angel Lascano. So uh, a number of Red Demons in on the tackle there. I'd like to thank our cameraman, Mike McCurdy, who is uh, doing a job with the cameras always tonight, trying to stay out of the cold. As I mentioned at halftime, Glenn Zimmerman, our statistician, Rob Caldwell on color, and Matt Veach is back to pass. It looks like it slipped out of his hands a little bit, but he's able to come up with it on top of the referee. <laughs> the referee's trying to get in on the play there, so the Indians catch the ball and uh, tackled by the referee will bring up third down and about three on the play. Referee made a fine tackle on that play, Matt. Kind of fell down, got in the way of the receiver, but he really didn't touch him. Jeff Bissey knocks down the ref, brings up third down and a long two, we'll call it. The Indians need to convert right here, get the momentum going. Ball spot at the 43-yard line. Handoff is up the middle, and he picked up the first down, did Eric Strauss. So Manhattan doing a good job of moving the ball out, keeping it on the ground, fixing up the pass, and Eric Strauss said, I want that first down, and that's what he did. Be a big boost, they could take it down and punch it in the end zone right here, Matt. His momentum completely switched over to Manhattan right now, so let's try to keep the ball rolling. Once again, the winner of this contest will be in Manhattan next week for the 6A state championship game. Two wide receivers, Garball and Mike Martin, right in front of your screen there. Veach is back to pass. 
He throws it over the middle to Garbal, who's wide open. Garbal cuts back to the 40, fights his way all the way down to the 37-yard line. Nice little bit of second effort on Gar's fault. Nice run after he caught the ball. Made sure he caught the ball <laughs> a little bit like last week. He tried that one time, missed that bomb. Matt Veach, nice throw that time. Ran a 15-yard button hook, hit him right on the number. Nice run after, after the catch. First down inside the 40 of Dodge City, Matt. Veach was looking to the outside and uh, caught the uh, Dodge City defense looking outside as well and fired it over the middle and Garball was wide open. First down and 10. Ball spotted at the 37-yard line. Veach pisses it back to Milliken. There's a block over there and Milliken breaks another one. He fights his way all the way down. It's going to be close to a first down. It looks like the Indians are really starting to move things around down there. We play that time. Matt Beach, the whole crew got out there and student body right and pick up about nine yards. Nice run by Scott Milliken. Yeah, because Gar got a really good block on him because he suckered in. Second down and two. Eight-yard gain on the play for Milliken. Mike Martin split to the far near side. Beach is back to pass. He's thrown to Martin. Martin's beat his man. Oh, and he slips, loses his traction, as did the referee. So <laughs> the referee <laughs> putting on a show, as you can hear the fans applauding him out there. Mike Martin almost came up with a fantastic catch there as he lost his footage. Martin made a nice effort. Matt Beach would have waited another second and a half. Might have lost a little bit higher. Would Could have been a touchdown, Matt. So it brings up third down and two. Jeff Bissey and Garball, the receivers. Gross at formation in the backfield. You're looking at Milliken and Strauss. It looks like somebody moved a little early. Matt Veach steps up the middle, and he's still on his feet trying to fight for that first down. And it's going to be real close. If the Indians got it, it's all credit to Matt Veach. He bounced off a number of players there. And it is a first down, so Manhattan looking very impressive, picking up exactly where they left off in the first half. Super run that time by Matt Veach, waited until the defense reacted and made his move. Nice patience on that option run. Temperature dipping right around the 20 degree mark right now with that slight drizzle still falling and that slight breeze out of the north. So things are going to be a little tender out there. Ice is starting to form on the steps outside. So it's football weather, folks. Off the left side, it looks like Eric Strauss, and he's not able to cut the corner. Terry Van Landingham, number 10 for the Red Demon. Knocks down Eric Strauss as Strauss just couldn't get any traction, couldn't get his cleats down. Nice open field tackle that time by Van Lanham. Strauss could have broke it by him, could have scored a touchdown that time, Matt. He did get a gain of one on the play as Andy McElvain brings in the play from Coach Lane. Brings up second down and nine. Nice little bit of ball control by the Indians so far. Dodge City has not put their hands on it yet this second half. Veach fakes handoff to Milliken. He passes across the middle to Gar Ball, and Gar is not able to get it. A little high and a little too far out in front of him. So it's going to bring up another third down. Third down and nine. So it's a big play. Third down and nine for the Indians. And the... You have to see if Veach can find him a man. Look for Gar Ball once again. Veach is back to pass. He's looking out there. He's under pressure. Screens it out to Milliken. Milliken's got some room. Some room up the middle. See if he can get to the first down marker. It's, uh, it's going to be close. Can't tell at the angle we're at right now whether he got the first down or how close he is. It's going to be fourth down, and it looks like three. Looks like the kicking unit for the Indians is coming in, so it looks like Larry Hatton will attempt a field goal. Ball will be spotted at the 18-yard line. Outstanding run that last time on that screen pass from Scott Milliken, all effort on his part. 35-yard field goal attempt by Larry Hatton is low, and it's not going to be good. I'm not sure if it got tipped at the line of scrimmage, but uh, it's no good by Larry Hatton. So, unfortunately, the Indians moved the ball quite well, but unfortunately they didn't score on a fourth down and three play. They moved it all the way down to the 18-yard line. They're going to have to rise to the occasion on defense. This point, they had the ball for five minutes, didn't come, up, come out with any points. See what their defense can do this time. 
Manhattan has not had any breaks yet. They've turned the ball over once. Dodge City hasn't turned it over yet, and that's exactly what Manhattan needs. They need a turnover. Hahn hands it off to the first man through, and it looks like Winkler, and that's exactly what Manhattan needs to do. Don't let them get past the line of scrimmage. Second and third effort killed them in the first half. Red Demon's second and third effort, and Manhattan needs to grab a hold of these guys and get them down the first time they touch them. He just tackled a little bit there this half, man. Didn't do a real good job of tackling that last half. Looks like, looks like the Demon's going to try to run a little bit of beer option more this half. Second down and nine for the Red Demons. Handoff is to the second man through. Hessman, he breaks one tackle, and he's going to be out to a first down. Boom, those guys can open up a line and get through the hole in a hurry. Look back, hit that hole quick, so quick. Little Another misdirection play, nice trap play. Like guard, guard pulled and hit the, knocked the linebacker out, and they gained him about 12. So Hessman, boy, he's doing a good job out there both on offense and defense, and that time he showed it, just busted through that line of scrimmage, wasted no time picking up the Red Demons first down. Ball spotted on the 33-yard line. Van Landerham is the man you see in front of your screen split to the right side. And the pitch is back to Hessman. He's got some room out there. J Jared Rand gets picked off, but there's going to be a nice tackle. From behind is James Albright with a nice tackle for the Indians. We'll be back right after this. Run picks up another first down for the Red Demons. Moves it up to their 44-yard line. Manhattan needs to stick it up right now. Dodge City can't put it more points on the border. Manhattan's really going to be in a deep hole. It looks like Van Landingham running up the middle. That's the uh, first time I've seen him carry the ball through the big ranks tonight. Gets it up to the 49-yard line. And the trap play by Dodge City. Looks like the bread and butter is trap play. Good team speed. Got guard pulls. He's, this, which, this Dodge City team's good at pulling. Brings up a second down and five, and Dodge City is just uh, moving the ball at will against the Indians right now. Offensive line is really moving off the ball. The pitch is back to Hessman, and uh, Hessman looks like he was going to pass it, but he doesn't, and he's going to be knocked down by Jared Rand. Also in on the play is Crawford, so the Indians do a nice job of breaking up that play. Super run by Hessman that time. Quarterback made a wrong read, pitched too early. Hessman cut back all the way across the backfield. Left defensive end for Manhattan, didn't stay home, Matt. Look what happened, almost got a first down. Jared Rand did a nice job of sticking Hessman. Hessman was trying to sidestep him, and Jared Rand said, no, -uh, we're just going to knock you down. It's going to be close to a first down. And if it is a first down, it will be a third consecutive one for the Dodge City Red Demons. They have to bring the chains all the way across the other side of the field. As you can see him marking the ball right there, it's going to be a first down for Dodge City. I'd have to say if Dodge City gets seven more points on the board right here on this series, uh, chances are that the Indians will be uh, <coughs> home for the rest of the season. Hessman, the second half, has three carries for 25 yards. And he's all the offense so far in the second half for Dodge City. Hahn fakes the handoff. He's bootleg off to the 40-yard line. He's going to be ridden down, fights his way across up down to the 38-yard line. They've run that play numerous times tonight. It's just a little bootleg by the quarterback. The Indians weren't ready for it, and they pick up seven on the play. It'll bring up second down and three. Good ball handling in the backfield and super quickness in the, also in the backfield for the whole Dodge City backfield. Both teams have had the ball one time here in the second half, and both teams are moving it. <laughs> Excuse me as Mother Nature gets to me again, but <laughs> and both teams moved the ball quite well. The Indians were held from scoring their first possession, and uh, now it's time for the Indian defense to stick it up. Second down and three. Hahn with the handoff to Hessman. He fights his way through, and it's going to be close to a first down right around the 35-yard line. We'll have to see what the officials decide. And they're going to bring in the chains, as you can hear the Dodge City fans not too pleased about that. They think they've got the first down. If 
Dodge City holds on to win this ball game. They'll be traveling to Manhattan next week to play in KSU Stadium, either against Lawrence High or Shawnee Mission West. And uh, this Dodge City team is definitely deserves to be 10-0 from what I've seen tonight, Rob. Uh, super offensive football team. Their defense played pretty good tonight, too, except for a couple drives. 3.45 to go in the third quarter. The Indians are down 19-6. to There's been no score here in the second half. Van Landingham right down in front of you. Han looks like he almost drops the ball. And the handoff is to Wayne Winkler, number 26. Gets a gain of two on the play. Bring up second down and eight. Nice play that time. But defensive end Kurt Crawford came, crashed down, and made a nice tackle. Ball spotted at the 33-yard line. <laughs> Only seen a couple passes here in the second half, and it looks like... Uh, Dodge City is just going to be content with driving the ball, keeping it on the ground, not risking any turnovers, and trying to run the time off the clock as it is in their favor right now. They lead the Indians by 13 points. Hahn, there's a reverse. And there's a reverse. It's going to be taken at the 20 all the way down to the 15, down to the 10-yard line. There's a fumble, but they're going to call it down at the 11-yard line. Van Landingham took the reverse from Hespin, and uh, the Indians read it quite well. They just didn't have enough men over there to stop the run. The slick, slick ball handle in the Dodge City backfield that time pulled their weak side people on the line. Came on out. It looked like a power sweep after they got through hand the ball off two, twice. So Van Landingham takes the handoff and uh, goes around the right end for the <coughs> Blue Red Demons, and they pick up another first down. It'll be first down and 10. They still have about six inches they could get a first down before they get into the end zone. Hahn with the bootleg down to the five-yard line. Look, he's not dragged down, and he's going to go into the end zone, and that's exactly what happened in the first half. The Indians just hold on to him. They don't get him down, and Hahn fought his way into the end zone. 11-yard run. Dodge City goes up 25-6. Super run that time by Rago Hahn. Just pure effort on his part. Cut back, cut it out, got to the outside again. They ran that play four or five times already for not tonight for good games, Matt. And those is not the army you hear out there. It is the uh, fireworks going off at Dodge City. Every time Dodge City has scored tonight, they've shot off fireworks. And right, righteously so. They are easily handling the Indians tonight, 25-6. to six. Thought we were in Fort Riley there for a little bit there, man. So you'd have to say Dodge City is just getting back for what happened to them last year as, as uh, they lost to Manhattan two times consecutively, 27-7 to seven, both times. The extra point, Jesse Mendoza kicks it through. 2.23 to go. In the third quarter, the Indians are down 26-6. to six. John Brown is set to kick for the Red Demons of Dodge City as they hold, carry a 26-6 lead. The ball is going to be booted down and it's going to be going into the end zone where Manhattan will take a touchback and take the ball at the 20-yard line. So I'd imagine you're going to see Matt Veach get his arm going tonight and see a little bit of air lane is what they call it at Manhattan High. See if the Indians can get things going here, get some more points on the board. I'm not going to count them out because they were down big to Seaman two weeks ago and came back and nearly pulled that ball game out. They were down last week against Wichita North and came back and pulled that one out, but they're going to have to get some big plays. They need some breaks. Veach is back to pass. He hits Mike Martin. Little slant pattern for five yards. Bring up second down and five. Those people that have compared this team to Junction City, I can see a big resemblance. They've got a lot of runners, a lot of offensive weapons. The only thing that happened to Junction City is that they committed nine turnovers against Manhattan when they played them this year. Very explosive team, this Dodge City team. Just like you said, Matt, comparable to Junction City. Bissy and Ball are the receivers out there for Manhattan. Beach hands it off up the middle. There's a lot of room for Eric Strauss. He cuts across the 50, and he's going to get down to the Red Demon 47-yard line. Nice little trap play for Eric Strauss. Had a lot of room to run. 
That's him, super black. Super blocking by the interior of the Manhattan offensive line. It's a nice play call by Coach Lane. Uh, the Red Demon defense was looking for a pass all the way, and Strauss just took his took it upon himself to get the first down. Ball spot at the 47-yard line. Veach with the ball. He's going to keep it and fights his way down to inside the 45. We'll call it the 44-yard line. to go in the third quarter. The Indians are down 26 to 6, but they're moving the ball once again. They've moved it quite well their last three series. Beach under pressure. He avoids the sack, gets it off, and it's going to be incomplete to Gar Ball. It hit the ground first. So uh, Matt Veach did a good job of just getting the ball off. He almost got sacked. Good job of jamming the wide receiver's line of scrimmage by the Dodge City defensive back. Matt Veach showed a lot of patience, waited until he cleared, waited until Mike Martin cleared, and couldn't get the ball to him, though. Looks like there's a nice fog setting in over the field. It's really hazy, really drizzly, really cold, and uh, just a miserable night to be out there playing football, especially if you're losing. Mike Martin and Garball, the receivers. Ball spot at the 45-yard line. Beach is back to pass under big pressure. It's almost intercepted, and it's going to be taken down by Garball. Excuse me, Mike Martin. Mike Martin did a super job of keeping that thing from being intercepted. That's nice concentration that time by Mike Martin. Kind of like a jump ball after he got tipped at the line of scrimmage there. Now there's not going to be a first down on the play. It'll bring up fourth down. It looks like the Indians will be forced to punt once again as the punting unit comes in. And once again, Dodge City is going to get the ball back in that awfully potent offense. Well, hopefully we'll get a turnover here in the next quarter so we can get back in this ball game, Matt. That's the thing. The Indians have not had many breaks tonight. There's been one turnover in the ball game, and that was a pass interception. Matt Veach was intercepted. Larry Hatton set to punt the ball. And there's going to be a delay of game penalty. The Dodge City team down there getting a little, uh, I don't know if they're celebrating a little early. There's still 12 minutes to go. It's the end of the first third quarter. With the score, the Indians 26-6. to six, And uh, they'll switch sides of the football and go right away. It's... 12 minutes show on the clock. The penalty came just before the end of the quarter, so the delay of game penalty will go against the Indians, and it'll be the end of the third quarter, and we'll move right into the fourth quarter. Ball is going to be sp spotted at the 47-yard line. You hear the Manhattan coach is concerned about the yardsticks and uh, no, 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 no. Don't think about it. the referees are confused out there. The yardsticks were moved and they shouldn't have been there. All they needed to do was move the ball to go in the opposite way. And the referee over there right now trying to figure it out. As you can see, a good contingent of Manhattan fans made the trip down to Dodge City. A nice little four and a half hour trip down here. And uh, I'll tell you the truth, I didn't expect to see this many fans down here, Rob. <laughs> What a night. It's, it's awful cold, and the wind's blowing straight in our face over here in the press box. Good turnout for the Manhattan people, though, tonight. And they look cold, and it's probably much colder for them than it is for Dodge City, as Dodge City is really putting it on the Indians tonight. 26 to 6. 12 minutes to go in the game for, actually in the season, for one of these teams. And unless Manhattan gets going, it's going to be them. I can't help to look forward to next year, though, Rob. They're going to have a lot of people back, a lot of experience. Matt Veach is going to be back. Just look for a super team once again from Coach Lane. So the ball spotted at the 48-yard line, and finally Larry Hatton will get to kick it away. Referees get everything figured out. It's a nice snap. There's one man that almost got away with getting a block. It's going to be taken by Brown at the 8-yard line, and he's going to take a one-on-one -on -one hit, and it's going to be popped down. Returned by number 25, John Brown. That gentleman will feel that hit in the morning. Jared Rand was in on the tackle. 
ball spotted at the eight yard line. So what happened is that they, uh, they had to run the play before the end of the third quarter. And that's the end of the third quarter right now as they switch side of the field. Brings up 26 to six. The Indians are down. We'll be back right after this. Red Demons, first down and 10, ball on the eight yard line. Try to force it right up the middle. Wayne Winkler on the carry brings up second down and eight. A little two-yard play. And imagine we can see Dodge City just keeping the ball on the ground and uh, taking really precautions with it. I wouldn't doubt it if we didn't see him throw it up in the air again tonight. Dodge City has not made any mistakes yet tonight, Matt. And that's probably been the difference in the game. They've handled the ball a lot back there in the backfield, but they just haven't dropped it or thrown any interceptions yet. Second down and seven on the play. The handoff is up the middle, and it's going to be nice containment. Ken Benson on, in on there, Murphy in there, James Albright in there, as was Mike Robinson. So a uh, nice little job on the Indian defense. Brings up third down and seven. <laughs> be nice for the Indians to get a turnover, uh, maybe a fumble down deep in their territory or a, a blocked punt if they can hold them here. Third down and seven. Look for Han to air it out. He's got Tom Wheeler on the near side. The handoff is to the right side, and it's going to be to Van Landingham. He's going to pick up the first down. And there is a penalty flag on the play. And it's in the backfield of the Blue Demon, Red Demons. So we're going to have to see. It looks like there was going to be a little illegal procedure. Flat back trap again that time by Dodge City. Looks like the Manhattan defensive line just overrun the plays and the linebackers are getting caught for over pursuing a little bit. The penalty is going to go against Dodge City. It was illegal motion, so it'll move them back five yards. Another break for Manhattan, and once again, if you're a Manhattan fan, you really need to hope for that break deep in their own territory. You also have to watch to get burned on this big play because there's going to be a lot of room out there if anybody uh, breaks it wide. John Brown has caught a lot of passes tonight for the Red Demons. <laughs> And up off the right side, there is a fumble. It looks like the Indians did get it, so we're looking for that big break. And Hessman fumbles the ball inside the 10-yard line. It looks like it's going to be down on the 5-yard line, and Manhattan will have the ball first down and goal. Super, super job that time by the Manhattan defense. Read the option play. Guy got out there and started tackling. The guy started tackling the ball this late in the ball game. Matt came up with a big turnover. Now got to punch it in. I need to keep wishing these bad things on the Red Demons, huh? Yeah. <laughs> they fumbled the ball, stripped it out, and the Indians will have the ball actually on the four-yard line. First down and goal from the four-yard line. The Indians are three touchdowns down. They need to get one right here. Each hands it off to Bridwell. He gets stacked up, fights his way in there. There's a fumble, it looks like, but no, he's able to hold on to it. Scott Milliken gets a gain of one on the play. He'll bring up second down and three. Indian offense needs to get the ball in the end zone, and they need to get it back two more times, so they can't waste much time. 9.25 to go in the contest. Beach with the handoff to Milliken. He fights his way down to the one-yard line to bring up third down and one. This is a two chances to get it in the end zone here. Coach Lane will definitely go for a touchdown on both plays. Hopefully they can get it in on the third down play. My guess would be either to Strauss or Milliken. One of the, either one of them has the capabilities of busting through there. You can see it, third down and one. The Indians trying to cut this lead. Veach hands it off to Milliken, and he fights his way in, and the referees are not going to give it to him. It's going to be about an inch. <laughs> it's going to bring up fourth down as Milliken couldn't get in there. Matt, 
would turn the Indians right here. It's taken three plays, and they've spent at least a minute and 30 seconds already on their own five, on Dodge City's five-yard line, so they're eating time up, too. Need to score here. All right, if Manhattan can't get the ball in the end zone here, you're going to hear a big roar from the crowd. You can hear them right now. They're fired up. They want the ball in the end zone. Three runners in the backfield, and Veach fires it in there, and they get a touchdown. So Matt Veach calms the Red Demons crowd. 8.09 to go. Twenty-six to twelve, the Indians down. Need this point after touchdown. We'll cut the lead to thirteen once again. Larry Hatton will be kicking the extra point for the Indians. And the chances are still alive for the Indians. Kick is up, and it is good. So with the score 26 to 14, 26 to 13, we'll be back right after this. Larry Hatton set the kickoff for the Indians. They're down by just two touchdowns and an extra point, 26 to 13. Hatton kicks a nice kick all the way into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback, prevents the run back from Mr. Winkler, and Dodge City will have the ball on their own 20-yard line. See if the Indians can force another turnover. The Indians are not out of this one by any means. They've uh, had an act the last couple of games of coming back. One they were able to win, the one against Seaman they were not, but both times they were down and were able to come back. Indians defense needs to rise to the occasion, needs to put the cold and the wet behind them and get in this game tough. Prevent the big play. Hahn hands it off to the second man, to Van Landingham off the right side. He's got some room, spins around, and he's going to gain a good five yards on the play. Anytime you can gain five, six yards on first down, you're doing some pretty good job. Yeah, nice bit of running that time by Van Landingham. We ran a power sweep to the right side of the field and got everybody out in front of it. Picked up game six. <laughs> Albright, of course, on the tackle. He's Mr. Everything for the Indians. Brings up second down and four. Ball spotted just across the 25. We'll call it the 26-yard line. Hahn does the bootleg again, and he's going to fight his way for a first down and more all the way down to the 35-yard line. 34-yard line. Hahn's done that all night long. They've run that bootleg five or six times down, Matt, and they haven't stopped it yet tonight. Looks like Dodge City's is running at will against Manhattan High defense right now. Well, they've got so many offensive weapons, it's unbelievable. They've got Van Landingham, they've got Hessman, they've got Mendoza back there, they've got, of course, Winkler back there, and himself as a quarterback, they've got Hahn, so uh, they've got at least five gentlemen that they can go with out of the backfield. And look for him to do exactly that again. Hahn hands it off through the middle. I'm not sure who the gentleman was, but uh, it looks like Hessman is going to pick up three on the play, bring up second down and seven. Dodge City runs so many trap plays. Matt, it's amazing. That's bread and butter all night long. The Indians need to stop them. If they get another first down, they're going to have a chance to run two or three more minutes off the clock. Second down and six. Hahn is back to pass. He airs it out down the middle to Brown, and it's going to be over his head. And Lindsey Sandahl and Paul Bridwell with the excellent pass defense for the Indians. I don't think he could have caught it anyway. It was thrown a little too far. 6.24 to go in the ball game. will bring up third down and six for the Red Demons. Manhattan needs to get the ball back desperately as soon as they can. Hahn gives the reverse to Van Landingham off the right side. He's going to be close, fighting his way towards the first down. He's not, he's not there yet. It's, he's, uh, he's very close. He's within a yard, and they've done that play a couple times tonight, too. Reverse to Van Landingham. Quick ball handling again by Dodge State. Swing back reverse once again. Looks like they're going to be about fourth and a foot to me, Matt. The officials aren't sure, so they're going to have to bring in the chains. And once again, we'd like to remind you that uh, Indian basketball is coming up very shortly here on TV6. 
You can see all the Friday night Indian basketball games with the likes of Howard Bunser and J.T. Marshall, Carl Kent, Ted Weiss, Muggler. All those gentlemen will be on the hardwood, and you'll be able to see all their Friday night games here on Channel 6. They're going to be short about a foot. <laughs> Rob, you called it, so it's short about a foot. like Dodge City is not going to punt. They're going to go for it, and the Indians thought they were going to punt it away. So it's fourth down and one. The Dodge City has a lot of confidence in their offense. And there's a fumble on the play. So there's another big break. Dodge City fumbles, and uh, that could be a big break in the ball game. The Indians are still alive. They've got the ball on Dodge City's 44-yard line. Never say die, Matt. They got the ball back to... Dodge City 43 yard line with about six minutes left in the ball game. Who knows what can happen? So here's the situation. The Indians are down 26 to 13. They've got the ball back. Dodge City elected to go for it on fourth down and fumbled the ball. They've got an injured player for Dodge City limping off the field. Here's Ron Long, number 61. So Manhattan, if they could get the ball in the end zone quick here, they're back in it. 26 to 13, 5.55 to go in the ball game. Matt Veach back to pass. He's got Mike Martin over the middle and it's in and out of his hands. He's not able to hold on to it. He's thrown a little bit behind him. Bring up second down and 10. The ball, Matt threw the ball behind him a little bit. Other than that, good play. So look for Ball or, or uh, Martin quite a bit out of the backfield. A little bit to Andy McElvain. Jeff Bissey also in there. Pro set formation. Receivers. Back is Veach. He airs it out. He's got Bissey, but Bissey is not able to get down there. Veach just threw that ball an awful long way. Dodge City's playing awful deep for defense. I expect they're run, lining up a nickel or pre-bit defense now. So they're looking, they're looking to see Manhattan pass a lot here in the closing minutes of the ball game. That's exactly what Manhattan's going to have to do. You might uh, look for a little uh, draw or a little trap play from the Indians. If, if they're going to be dropping back in that big of a, a defense, there's going to be a lot of room to run the ball. If they're going to do it. They need to do it now. It's third down and 10. Beach back to pass once again. He's looking for Garball on the outside. He's got him at the thir 30. Excuse me. He's got a first down at the 32-yard line. Garball ran a good pattern. He cut it, faked inside and cut outside, and right when he turned around, the ball was there, and Matt Veach had it to him. 32-yard line, first down and 10 for the Indians. Perfect execution, like you said, on that play, Matt. Garball ran a nice pattern, and Veach threw the ball. First down for the Indians on the 27. So the Indians come in with another set of plays. They've been running this pro set formation quite a bit under pressure with the receivers Ball and Martin. Strauss off the left side. He's got a lot of room. Runs over one man. Oh! And he is tripped. Oh boy, he was going into the end zone. And that's the second time Strauss has been tripped and saved from a touchdown. Super effort by Eric Strauss. Both three tackles on that run. One more. It's been so close all night long. So close, man. Ball spotted at the 14-yard line. Another first down for the Indians. And uh, the Indians never say die. And that's exactly what they're doing tonight. At one time, they were down 26 to 9. Actually, 26 to 6. There's a blitz on the play. Veach back to pass. And he's got Mike. Looked like Mike Martin was in the end zone, had it in his hands, wasn't able to hold on to it. And you heard the reaction from the Manhattan coaches. They weren't too happy about it. Mike Martin had it in his hands in the end zone. And uh, have to see if he'll get a chance to redeem himself. Can't throw a pass any better than that, Mike. Matt, super throw, super throw that time by Matt Beach. So, second down and 10. Ball still on the 14-yard line. 4.56 to go in the ball game. The Indians are still alive. Gar ball split to the near sideline. Beach back to pass. He's got a man over the middle. It's McIlvain, and McIlvain's got it. He's fighting his way inside. He fights his way down to the four-yard line, and it's going to be short of a first down, third down, and one, and the Indians are knocking on the door once again. Big play that time by Andy McIlvain. That's about a six reception tonight. 
We got about third and two, Matt. Big play for the Indians here. You got to hand it to Matt Beach. He's been in a super job in the last two weeks under pressure throwing the ball. He's been dead on target. And the referees are going to have to take a timeout. Milliken's got a little problem with the strap on his helmet. And that is not a timeout charge to the Indians. It's an official timeout. Indians set to go. Third down and two. Ball is spotted on the four-yard line. They need to get down inside the two for the first down. The handoff is to Strauss, and he files his way over. It's going to be a first down. So the Indians will have first down and goal to go from the two-yard line. And if I were a Dodge City fan right now, I would be uh, biting my nails. Yeah, I would too. I need to get it in the end zone here soon, though. It's coming down to four minutes right now, and probably, probably see an onside kick if Manhattan does score a touchdown here, Matt. First down and goal as the Dodge City fans try to get behind their defense. Manhattan has owned this second half with the exception of one score by the Red Demons. Firing his way into the end zone, it's Eric Strauss. Eric Strauss gets the touchdown for the Indians on a two-yard run, and the Manhattan Indians are back in this one, 26 to 19. I'll well, have to go for one here because if you went for two, it really wouldn't matter much. So if Larry Hatton can kick this baby through the uprights, the Indians will be within six of the Red Demons. 3.52 to go into the contest, and baby, baby, this one has gotten exciting. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. 26 to 20, the Indians are back into this one. 3.52 to go in the ball game. We'll be back right after this. Tell you what, last week I started putting the Indians down and calling them out, and they came back and won the ball game. And just when I started counting them out tonight, they got, they I think they heard me, and they're coming back right now. 26 to 20. I'm still going to count them out of this one, so they'll come back and win it. Okay, 26 to 20. Larry Hatton set to kick it off. Will we see an onside kick? We're not sure. I'm sure Dodge City is going to expect one. Larry Hatton can also kick it out of the end zone as well. And he does kick it onside. It is 10 yards. The Indians got it. Oh, there's a penalty flag on the plate. And boy, there's a flag on the play. It looks like they're going to call the Indians for taking it early. The penalty flag was thrown late. And the referees are going to say that the Indians touched the ball early. It's going to be Dodge City's ball, and boy, is that a bad break for the Indians. <laughs> the coaches can't believe it, and uh, I think the Dodge City people in the press box even thought that the Indians had the ball. Boy. Matt, I don't know about you, but that ball was on the, this side of the 50, and that looked like a not legal play to me. I don't know. I, I can't understand what's going on. I, the only thing I could think of is you can't advance it, but that wasn't the call. Well, the referees are trying to figure out what they just called. I don't think they know what they called. You can hear one of the Manhattan coaches saying, if they decline the penalty, they've got to kick it over, and they can't uh, do it right there. Coach Lane is trying to get it all figured out on the other side. You can, you can see Coach Lane talking with the officials on the other side trying to get it all straightened out. It looked like the Indians had the big break, but uh, the official threw the flag. The official is trying to explain what's going on, and the Manhattan coaches say if the Indian, if Dodge City declined it, they need to kick the ball over. Manhattan had recovered the ball. So we'll get it sorted out here. And they are giving Dodge City the ball in Manhattan territory, so we'll have to see. It looked like the Indians had their big break. 26 to 20. Hahn with the handoff to Winkler. He goes off the right side. A gain of two on the play. Now things are fired up out there. There's going to be a lot of hitting. <laughs> a lot of confusion out there on the field. I don't think the referees quite know what's going on either, Matt. <laughs> Well, the referee was standing right there. We're right on the 50-yard line. It looked like uh, the Indians recovered it after it had gone the 10 yards, but uh, 
The officials are down on the field. We can't do anything about that. 3.13 to go in the ball game. The handoff is to Winkler. He's going nowhere. Once again, brings up third down. Indian defense is looking sharp out there. You have to watch him prevent the big play. Kurt Crawford, nice play. Crashing down from the defensive end position. Big play for the Indians here. Need to hold him so he can get the ball back. You got to hand it to the Indians tonight, boy. They have done a super job of coming back. Looked like they had the big break that we were talking about. They're up. They've needed all night. Now they can still get the ball back. It's third down and six. Ball is spotted at the 45-yard line. Hahn, there looks like an inside reverse to Van Landingham, and he's going to pick up the first down. So Van Landingham gets that. This time it wasn't a real reverse. It was an inside reverse, and uh, Van Landingham picks up the first down, and just when you thought the Indians were going to come pull it out, Dodge City comes back and picks up that first down. Plays broken the Indians' defense back all night long. Ran it successfully. You haven't been able to stop it yet. So Dodge City's got a new set of four downs. First down and ten. We're come approaching the two-minute mark. And the handoff is to Winkler up the middle. Excuse me, up to Mike Hetzman up the middle. Gain a two on the play, and Dodge City will take all the time in the world right now to call in their plays. Dodge City trying to get things going once again. A minute 39 to go. The handoff is to Winkler. He runs up the middle. There's nowhere to go. 130 to go in the contest. The Indians, I believe, have two timeouts left. It's going to bring up a third down and about six once again. Again, we want to invite you to stay for a moment for the award. The clock ticking down. 1.15 to go in the contest. The Indians are letting it run in hopes that they'll get the ball back and be able to use those timeouts on the offensive side of things. Hahn keeps it himself on the bootleg and he slips inside and he's not going to be able to get it. So uh, looks like there's going to have to be a punt on the play from Dodge City. And the Indians do call a timeout with 51 seconds to go. Fifty-one seconds to go in the season for somebody, and it looks like uh, the Dodge City fans think it's going to go their way, but don't count the Indians out yet. They can still come back. They're, we're going to have to see if there's going to be a punt on the play. Dodge City fans want to see their team go to the state championship. Going for it on fourth down. Handoff is up the middle, and it is a first down. And that's probably going to drive the nails in the coffin for the Indians tonight. Well, nice, nice bit of running that time by Winkler again. Just got the three yards that he needed. And doesn't look good right now for Manhattan. First down and 10 for Dodge City with under, under 50 seconds left to play, Matt. Well, the Indians take, looks like their final time out of the contest. So uh, 49 seconds to go, and it's all but academic right now as Dodge City will probably just fall on the ball. They'll need to snap it twice. A Red Demon team that looks to be running its record up to 11-0 and 0 on the season. And, uh, you know, very super ball team. Uh, very explosive offensively. You need to contain those backs. Got to keep them contained because they got great speed in that backfield. Greg O'Han threw the ball real well tonight. And the defense played well. Oh. Well, if you can believe what we just heard, Shawnee Mission beat Lawrence 16 to nothing. That's uh, pretty much amazing since Lawrence High has been putting up 40s on the board all season long. So it looks the way things look right now. It will be Shawnee Mission West going against Dodge City for the 6A state finals. And that ball game, of course, will be contested in Manhattan. And you want to go out and see that. Even though the Indians won't be playing, you'll want to go out and see that because that's going to be a good brand of football at KSU Stadium next week. Also, when KSU Stadium will be 5A. 
So it's all academic now as the Red Demons will let the clock run out. Final score will end up being 26 to 20, and we'll uh, be able to give you some unofficial statistics as soon as our statistician Glenn Zim Zimmerman gets them wrapped up. Inside, 15 seconds to go. And Han just falls back and downs it. And that's going to be the contest. Dodge City has beat the Indians 26 to 20. You can see the celebrating on the field. As the, uh, the officials try to keep the players off the field, actually keep the fans off the field, and they're going to make some award presentations. The Indians will get their runner-up plaque. Dodge City will get the uh, championship substate plaque. 26 to 20 is the final score. And it'll be Dodge City against Shawnee Mission West. Rob, your analysis of the ballgame. Well, tale of two halves. First half, Dodge City dominate, put 26, 20 points on the board. Second half, Manhattan came out and played a whole different kind of football game. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde here tonight, but came up with just a little bit too short. Well, some statistics, some unofficial statistics from Glenn Zimmerman show total yards 323 in the first half, 384 in the second half, a total of 700 plus total yards for Dodge City compared to Manhattan's 229 yards. And I would have to say, if the Indians could have played as intense the first half as they did the second half, it would be a different ball game. They played a super football game in the second half, but just ran out of time, I would say. Uh, next week,